So today we're going to be making another reverse draw crossbow, but the difference between this one and the last one is that this one holds down the arrow from the front and the back end, and this one doesn't involve any fiberglassing. We're also going to be learning how to make a new, much more sturdy arrow. Let's get to work. So as I mentioned in the vlog, the main problem that you guys had with the last crossbow build video was that one way or another you just weren't able to do the fiberglassing, whether it was because your parents didn't want you to or it was just because you were really uncomfortable with using it. It's totally understandable. Fiberglassing is extremely dangerous. I actually myself wouldn't recommend it to anybody under the age of maybe 16 without adult supervision. Uh, so I did a little brainstorming and I came up with a method to make a crossbow without using any fiberglass whatsoever. And the secret ingredient is the letter A, also known as clamps. We're gonna need like this many. This is uh, six, no, five. So I already showed you how to make the body of the crossbow and the spacer and stuff in the last video, so I'm not going to bore you by showing you how to make it all over again. I'll just let you know when there's any little things that I've changed since the first video, like for example this right here. I've taken a file and I've rubbed some 45 degree angles onto the edges of the brackets. This way when it's all together, the arrowhead's just going to be able to rest inside there and not have to stick out of the end of it. This is what the new limbs are going to look like. It might not make much sense looking at it right now, but once you've got it all put onto the body of the crossbow you're gonna see a lot more what I'm going for what you're gonna need to make this thing is a piece of any kind of rigid metal plate that is two and a half by six inches you're gonna need a laundry line pulley a length of zinc plated steel punch flat bar two clamps and a 17 inch length of aluminum square tubing oh and uh, just some assorted nuts bolts washers and lock washers we're gonna start by bending the metal plate so that it fits the contours of the clamp put a couple holes along the center lines and then put your aluminum tube on it. Flip all the stuff over, drill through those holes that you drilled before, and then drop a couple bolts through it and put some nuts on the end. Once it's connected, then flip it over, lay your clamp on it, and use a sharpie in that hole and that hole to mark out where you need to drill your next holes. Then once the holes are drilled through, you just put some bolts and nuts and lock washers on the end of it to attach the clamps to the plate. And now we're going to start on the end of it. Take your laundry line pulley wheel and flip it over so you see this little thing with the hole in it then you're gonna push on the cap on the other end so that it comes up right there and then you're just gonna cut that end off I'm gonna use an angle grinder for this but you can use a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel or probably even a hacksaw and once that end is off you can just pull it right out through the side so you pull the pin out and then the wheel just pops right out so now I'm gonna round out the edges of the punched flat bar and now we're gonna bend this around this so we basically make this out of this and now drill through here put a bolt through it put the wheel in here and then do that special configuration that I taught you in the last video with the bolt and then the lock washer and then the nut so that you don't have to put another nut on the end of it so you make two of those and then you're just about done we're gonna attach it to the body of the crossbow by just running a couple bolts through the holes on this side of the clamps and then right here you can either use a really really long bolt or just go and get some threaded rod from Home Depot and just cut it down to length and then use it right there so now in the end right here drill a quarter inch hole and then on the other end inside that little divot that we made in the beginning drill a half inch hole I'll explain why I cut this chunk out of it after I got the bow strung up and everything but after you're happy with the shape of everything then you're just gonna stain it or paint it or whatever you want to do I'm going to use some ebony wood stain and a protective coating of polyurethane so here's how it looks after the wood stain this is a really good example as to why I prefer wood stain over paint because if I were to have just like spray painted this thing it would completely covered up all this wood stain and just made it look like a big giant piece of plastic if you would prefer spray painting it go ahead there's nothing stopping you this is just what I think looks the coolest so now I'm gonna throw on some gloves and a respirator and I'm gonna get to work on the polyurethane coating and I almost forgot before you do the polyurethane coating you're gonna want to put some glue into that little hole that you drilled in the end right there and drop one of these 0.47 inch super magnets into it so that once you do the polyurethane coating it'll be sealed in there so the polyurethane is drying right now but what I did is I took a rod and I put it through one of the holes and then I put a string on that so I could hang it this way you can paint the entire thing without having to worry about painting one part of it and then putting it down and letting that dry and then flipping it over and then painting that part so I'm gonna let this hang here overnight and then I'll come back
back in the morning. Once the polyurethane was dry, I just reattached the limbs to it. Now this was something that I just sort of glossed over in the last video, but that I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about in this one. The spring that goes on the back here that holds down the arrow. First, find some sheet steel. I'm gonna be using the old housing from a DVD player. And now you're gonna take three measurements. The first measurement is this edge to the hole. The second measurement is this edge to this edge. And the third measurement is this edge to this edge. Draw the measurements you just took out on a very flat part of the steel and then extend the top of it about four and a half or five inches. Now drill the hole and after you've got the hole drilled out then cut out the whole entire shape with an angle grinder or a dremel tool. Then once it's cut out bend it on that line and then taper the end of it. Bend it into an L, curl back the top end of it, then bend the long part right there. Now put a bolt through the hole and just bend it down and then you can just cut off the ends of all these bolts and that is the end of the crossbow. And now for the arrow or bolt. First you take a wooden dowel and then you cut it at the appropriate length depending on how long you've made your crossbow. Then grab a steel tube and a nail that is huge. First we're going to grind down the edges of the tube so that it looks a little bit more like this and then you're going to cut off about an inch and a half from the end of it. Then sharpen the end of the nail. Then once it's sharpened cut off at least an inch from the end of it but you can do more if you want the arrow to be heavier. Now take the nail and put it into the pipe at least a half an inch and if you have a welder this is the moment to use it but I do not so all I'm gonna do is put this in my vise and squish this until it holds really tightly onto the nail then put the dowel rod in and use a really high strength glue or epoxy to hold it in then just like I showed you how to do in the PVC pipe bow and arrow video to make the fletching just put a piece of duct tape uh, face up and then put the rod down on it then take another piece of duct tape and lay it flat down on top of that then trim the fletching so they're no wider than the body of the crossbow and cut them in such a way that you'll be able to lay a strip of duct tape across this part of the fletching right here and wrap it around. And then do that on the back and the front actually. And then use either a round file or a triangular file to put a little notch in the back of the arrow that is parallel to the fletching. And there you go, a reverse draw crossbow with absolutely no fiberglassing involved. Now I guess I cut this a little bit too far back, but now you can see why I cut that piece out of it. It's so that these strings that go under that don't have anything to do with launching the arrow, they're not pulled downwards and getting pulled off the wheel. Then you take your arrow, put it on the track, slide it backwards so that it goes under underneath the spring, and then the magnet holds down the front of the arrow. And then you're ready to fire. So it should be pretty apparent this crossbow is basically entirely concept exploration. I mean, honestly, whoever heard of a crossbow that's powered by clamps? But with this being the first of its kind, obviously it's going to have some bugs that you have to work through. The main one being... This is not a very powerful weapon, if you can call it that. At this stage, I would actually consider it more of a toy. But hey, it's the first one I ever made. I think it looks really, really cool. So I would consider this build a success just because it proves the soundness of the whole clamp crossbow thing and because it looks really cool. So I'd definitely love to revisit this concept sometime in the future. I could add some more clamps. I could, I don't know, make a different pulley system. I really have no idea right now. I'll do that sometime in the future when I have haven't made like two or three crossbow videos in a row. I don't want to start boring you guys. But if you guys wouldn't mind me taking a second to sort of change the subject, I would like to thank you for just how really great you've been to me over the last month and a half specifically with how awful I've been with uploading videos since I had to get a job because I wasn't making enough money here on YouTube. Looking at other YouTubers comments, I've been noticing more and more the way that other subscribers treat those people that they're subscribed to. The way that they treat them like they are their slaves, like they owe them something, and you know, the way that they that they tear them down as soon as they post a video that isn't 100% satisfactory to them specifically. Just that disgusting air of entitlement. I can honestly say the whole entire time that I've been YouTubing seriously, I've probably only run into two or three of my subscribers that have ever treated me that way. <laughs> three subscribers out of tens of thousands. I can't put into words how much that means to me. I might not have quite as many subscribers as the bigger YouTubers out there, but where they have me beat, with quantity, I have most definitely got them beat with quality. You guys aren't just the best, you are the actual best. I definitely would not still be posting videos if it wasn't for my incredible subscribers. So that's all I've got for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.